Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to be making um, some of my homegrown acorn squash uh, in my air fryer oven. Now a little backstory about my squash situation this year. I was introduced to squash bugs here in northern Indiana this year and it, they kind of took over the whole area so it wasn't just me. But needless to say, um, I only got two acorn squash off my plant. So of course I'm going to be saving these seeds, right? Anyway, uh, the butternut squash did a lot better and I definitely did save seeds from that. Um, anyway, I was watching um, The Gentleman and I was trying to think of for a while what his name was. It is <sighs> New Wave Recipes or something like that. New Wave Recipes, yes something it's similar anyway uh, he was making a spaghetti squash in his gourmet uh, digital air fryer oven and so I thought well why not use my acorn squash and the last time I cut one of these bad boys open without nuking it first I totally sliced my thumb and had to super glue it shut so <laughs> since I want to save seeds I won't be nuking these first to cut into them so I'm gonna put my brave face on I'm going to cut them halfway, scoop out the seeds, and I'll get back with you after that point. So I was looking up a little inspiration for this recipe, and I came across Melanie Cook's YouTube channel, and she was making squash fries, and all she added to it was cinnamon and olive oil, and I have both. And so uh, I didn't finish the video and see how long she was cooking it, at what temperature. I did kind of flip through some other recipes online, just regular tech style, and it says like 300 degrees for 20 to 30 minutes. And that's just with the acorn squash sliced in half. So I'm going to go ahead and just do like 10 minutes per side. Um, I want them brown and caramelized. I still want a good cook out of them, but I don't want to overcook them. So I'm going to try 10 minutes and see how that goes. But let's move on to uh, the recipe. So I got this camera angled in the best way that I can. I've already pre-sharpened my cuisine art knife and it is still super sharp. And look, I didn't slice my uh, hands, fingers open this time, but I will point out that she says in Melanie Cooks to slice it this way, not along the grain. And we're going to go ahead and cut these into about half inch rings, whatever. And this part could be scary if you get close to your fingers. <laughs> I still need some Kevlar gloves, so that would be great. And then we're just going to discard these stem ends. And obviously I'm going to put mine in my compost. Or feed it to the worm bin, either or. Now it's just going to hang off to this side. Then we will cut the rings in half. Stick them in a bowl or a plate because we're going to have to coat these with cinnamon and oil. So whichever you prefer. And that's it. And so I'll get back with you since that's kind of easy. All right. So I'm going to toss in some olive oil. Woo, that could be a little bit much, but it's fine. some cinnamon and if I had brown sugar I may or may not put that in but I am trying to stay fairly low carb low sugar since I've been gaining weight so that part is optional um, you know spice up your acorn squash however you feel fit put maple syrup on it if you want to be sugary or put on some what is that uh, xylitol or some other uh, sugar products and swerve I'm pretty sure swerve makes um, replacement brown sugar as well. Those things I don't have, so I'm just going to go with the natural sugars of the acorn squash, which make sure everything's coated well. Okay, now I have wax paper down on the tray part of my air fryer. It is not the drip pan. I've been using it for a secondary drip pan, but it is not one. So I'm actually going to use it for my acorn squash. I don't know how many acorn squash slices I'll be able to fit in here in one batch, but <laughs> we'll give her a good go. I 
I don't want to overcrowd and then them not cook evenly either, so I will try to be conscientious of that. Looks like a couple different batches here, but that's fine. Let me get my hands washed. So I went ahead and turned on the air fryer oven to 400 degrees and set the timer for 10 minutes and now it's preheating up. And um, I bet you if I put wax paper on this basket up here that I would be able to put in two layers of acorn squash. However, since this is new to me and I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> I don't even have an exact time for this recipe. Um, I am just going to do one tray at a time. I still have some in the bowl. Um, maybe some other time I can experiment with putting in two racks at once and see how long that takes and how I have to flip them and all that. If any of you have any experience with that, please let me know the differences, how it turned out for you. I want to learn and would be excited to hear about it. So I don't think you need me to sit here and... Uh, film this preheating or when it adds food. So I'll let you know after the 10 minutes is up how it turns out. They also said along with the uh, air fryer, this little cheat sheet chart, and I put it on the fridge so that either Ryan and I or the kids can look at it, uh, reference it, what you want to cook. Now what's funny is vegetables. It does say uh, temperature 400 degrees, time 10 to 8 to 60 minutes. Hang on. Okay, back where I was. I did flip over the, the acorn squash and did hit the vegetable setting, and it did take it to 400 degrees for 25 minutes. Obviously, I changed it back down to 10 minutes after I flipped over the acorn squash. Anyway, default time, it does say it is 25 minutes. Amount, 16 ounce, one piece pieces tossed with two tablespoons of oil that's the tray that I've got and it'll tell you tray posi position on the back it just basically tells you basically how to use it but I like this little cheat sheet right here I think it's going to come in handy um, I did not have one inch pieces and 16 ounces like yeah I literally did not weigh and measure it but that is um it is a pretty good you know reference so I did want to share that no yeah it's telling me to add food it's already in there <laughs> so yeah okay a couple observations here it is pretty smoky in the house and another gentleman I was watching that was uh, making like air fryer fried chicken with the Louisiana batter for fried air fryers and he was also making fried fish. Well, what he pointed out was he likes avocado oil as far as a spray for the air fryer. And why he says that is because it has a higher smoke point, which is 500 degrees for avocado oil, which means that it puts out less smoke in your home. So uh, taking that in into consideration, when I do get paid next, um, I get paid bi-weekly. Um, I am going to purchase some um, avocado oil. And I've also noticed people are just using like regular like hair salon sprayers. You know, you put water in it, wet down the hair or whatever. And putting oil in that and using that for a sprayer instead of buying cooking spray in an aerosol form or what have you. And that may be more cost effective. So I'm going to look into that and figure out which is the best option. Um, other than that, uh, it's not like black smoke or anything. It's not choking anybody out. It's just you just notice it um, So there's that now. I do want to say when I before I did flip them over I did notice that it does look pretty well cooked and I think the temperature and the time is great But obviously we have two minutes left So I'm not trying to jump the gun yet and draw total conclusions yet. Oh Yeah, the other observation I wanted to point out was this little spot down here seems to leak oil or grease or whatever so just keep a paper towel or a washcloth or something handy right there which i'm going to start doing because in that spot for some reason it keeps dripping so that's just something else i'm pointing out i don't know if it's like that with all brands models whatever but it is a little bit of a hassle or irritating but it's not a big deal all right folks our food is done let me get set up here and we'll get her out. Excuse me. A 
look at it. It does look nice and brown and very delicious. Make it a plate down. So there's a little more than two batches in that needs to go in there, but that's fine. Now I'm going to give you a taste test. That's really good. Now it could use some salt on it, but acorn squash on its own, and butternut squash, it really doesn't need sugar added to it. Yes, it enhances the flavor and takes it to like a dessert level, but honestly, it's really good on its own. So I approve this message. I approve the air fryer for um, winter squash, especially this recipe. And I hope to do more cooking of different squash and such in my air fryer. And I hope you enjoy this video and learn something new today. And I wanted to tell you that I love you and so does Jesus. God bless.